Okay guys, so I decided to put this video together to answer some actually really good questions I was getting about the uh, Unraid server. So let's go through some of those questions, see if I can answer it. Thanks for the feedback, thanks for the questions, um, hopefully this helps. I've had a lot of fun making these videos. Uh, first, can you pre-clear more than one drive at a time? Short answer is yes, and there's a couple different ways you could do that. But at the end of the day, essentially what the pre-clear is, is a script that runs, writes and reads, essentially zeros to the hard drive. And it's a Linux server, you can run that in multiple threads. Now, can you save some time doing that? Yeah, but I probably wouldn't try to like pre-clear eight drives at once, because what's going to happen is you've got a single controller, and it's going to end up being basically a bottleneck for the other drives. But certainly go ahead and do one or two at a time, that's perfectly acceptable. Does the processor and number of cores have an influence on the time it takes to run pre-clear? Answer, no. Uh, the bottleneck is definitely not in the processor or the number of cores or the actual computing power of your server. Um, the bottleneck is in the drive speed, uh, the head movement, um, and the fact is that it's just reading and writing uh, just a large amount of data to the drive. Um, also, as part of that, all it's doing is writing zeros and reading back zeros. So there's not a lot of calculation overhead to that. Um, so probably the weakest processor, even maybe an Atom chip, if you could run it on that, uh, would be more than sufficient to do this pre-clear process. You're going to be essentially waiting for that drive and that controller. So uh, whether you've got a 12-core Xeon or a 2-core AMD A6, it's likely going to pre-clear at pretty much the same speed. Next question, are NAS drives slower? Some are, some aren't. Let me explain. So Western Digital, as, just to use them as an example, they make two different varieties of NAS drives. Uh, there's the WD Red, which is your typical NAS drive, and those are the rated, obviously, for NAS use. Uh, they typically spin at about 5,400 RPM, and they have a cache on them anywhere from 64 to 256 megabytes. Cache helps a bit with reads, but unless you're rereading the same data, that's not going to have a big impact. There's also the WD Red Pros, which are faster. They're typically running at 7200 RPM. Um, the drives I tend to really enjoy using are the HDST Desk Stars, uh, that's owned by Hit Hitachi, which is now a subsidiary of Western Digital. Uh, those typically run at 7200 RPM, and again, cache between 128 and 256 megabytes. I find those drives are comparable to any kind of spindle drive you're going to have on your desktop. Okay, so any kind of spinning hard drive. Uh, clearly, they're not going to be as fast as an SSD. So, why would you choose a slower drive? Generally speaking, you're going to save money on, on your power usage to a point. Um, and they're also a bit cheaper, so you're going to save some money there. So, What's the old adage, uh, good, fast, cheap, choose any two? That really applies here. Uh, some people I've seen also use WD green drives, um, which are the uh, green that's like the economic, or sorry, the, green is like the eco-friendly version of hard drives. Now, they will be slower, and you're going to notice them. I've used these myself, and I tend to uh, shy away from them. Um, the SATA interface is usually half the speed of your normal Western Digital NAS drives or even your desktop drives. So instead of a 6, six gigabit a second, you end up with 3 gigabit a second. That's just your transfer rate. Also, the rotational speed tends to be listed as IntelliPower, meaning it tends to slow down for power usage. So they may slow down as low as like 4,800, 4,200 RPM. Um, the idea is if they're spinning slower, they're saving power. And the drives are sort of designed for archiving, so performance was not uh, the main goal when building those drives. So good for power consumption, bad for performance. Now, before you go and say, oh, I can save some power with the green drives, you got to remember one of the nice features of Unraid and the fact that it does not stripe data across drives, rather it writes entire files to single drives, is you can spin down those drives if you're not using it. So if you're reading a media file off of drive one, and you're not doing anything with drive two, Unraid can spin that drive down, basically shut it off. So you're getting power savings there anyway. So using an IntelliPower drive to save you some money, you're really not going to get the savings you need if that drive's going to be spun down most of the time anyway. So I would say the savings you're going to get both on power and on cost savings, probably not worth your trouble. But be aware of it. Uh, summary, NAS drives do not have to be slower than your typical desktop hard drives. 
the WD Red Pros, uh, even the, the new Seagate NAS drives, um, they're all quite fast. Uh, they're going to still be slower than some of the dedicated desktop drives up until about 2016, early 2017. Uh, a lot of people were buying uh, WD Blacks, which are basically drives that spin at 10,000 or more RPMs. Um, these won't be as fast as those. But typically your NAS storage is going to be, uh, you've got to have different needs, right? You're going to be doing long-term storage. Uh, you're going to be doing centralized storage. If you're going to use, if you want high performance to play games, you're definitely going to want a hard drive in your local system for that. Um, or even an SSD. That said, also, if you, there's a point of um, limited return, so you can put a bunch of drives, really high speed drives in your NAS, and there's only two ways that's really going to benefit you, because um, your bottleneck is likely to be your network. So if you're just doing storage and putting files out there and pulling them back, your bottleneck's probably not going to be the drive speed, it's probably going to be the network speed, and that's a whole other video we could talk about. Uh, the other thing you can do is, let's say you have multiple drives. Now, unlike traditional RAID systems where you want to have all your drives sort of match so you can get predictable performance, on RAID you can really put anything you want in there. So if I have a 10 gigabyte, 7200 RPM drive, I can put that on the same array as, let's say, a 50... 5200 RPM uh, drive I had laying around, it's like one terabyte. And your performance is gonna depend on which drive you're reading from. Now, one of the things you can do when you create shares with Unraid is you can tell it, I want this share to use these fast drives and I want this other share to use maybe these slow drives. So if I have a high performance application that wants to, that needs higher performance, I can make sure it targets the faster drives in my array and if I'm just doing backups or long-term storage, I can target the slower drives. So you can actually make this work to your advantage. Next question, do you need to pre-clear SSDs for the cache? Uh, no, you don't want to pre-clear any drive for the cache. It's not necessary because uh, the cache is not going to be parity protected. You could build a cache array where they're mirrored um, or pooled, but your data is typically not protected until it gets into the, uh, into the parity protected array. You don't need to do any pre-clear on that. Are SSDs a good idea for the main array? Uh, they work fine. You can certainly do it. They're a bit expensive. Um, you can definitely get more bang for your buck using traditional uh, NAS spindle-based hard drives. Um, also, SSDs uh, have a limited number of write cycles, so they're great for doing reads, but if you're going to be constantly doing writes and updates, in, especially for your parity driver, there's a lot of changes. You're going to actually wear out the life of that drive a bit faster. So the only reason I can see using an SSD here would be for high performance applications where you actually need that extra performance. Uh, personally, if I had SSDs that I could throw into my Unraid server, I would use it for the cache drives for faster writing or for supporting other things such as onboard virtual machines where it could actually take advantage of that extra performance of that SSD drive. So that's about it guys. I hope, hope this answers your questions and uh, I've got more videos coming in the very near future. Thank you.